Hi guys, Jacob here from the Yorkshire Canine Academy. We just had Olive dropped off. Olive is a three-legged Doberman that is suffering from some lead-based reactivity like a lot of the dogs that we work with. So we're going to start with the absolute basics, so the fundamentals, where to find reinforcement, where she won't find reinforcement. I'm going to start teaching her when I put her on her training collar that it's almost impossible to move me whether she's up on two legs or whatever she might be doing. I've got my two dogs out, Ranger and Dala, that are gonna help out with this session. They've stayed still enough that she's not even noticed they're there yet. So what I'll start doing, I'll start warming her up around here and start incrementally getting her closer, see how she gets on. I'll check the distance in which she struggles and then we'll probably work at that distance throughout the day and incrementally try and get closer to the dog. She's on a, a large flat collar. These type of collars aren't aren't really designed for training because they don't give me any leverage in kind of manipulating the dog's body position and turning in the dog's head and stuff. So I put a very, very basic slip collar on which will sit just above her head. As you can see, she's very nervous um, and she might have a big tantrum and freak out. Unfortunately, it's just something we have to work through. We might see a bit of a tantrum here, might a bit, a bit of a freak out, but this is why we're working with the dog today. Well, what you might see is a little bit of stress coming from her. Reason being, she's lost um, a functioning tool, a functioning behavioural tool. Of if I pull on the lead, I get to move forward and I get con to control where me and the handler go. What happens with when we're working with uh, lead reactivity and it's connected to frustration is we allow our dog to pull us to a lamppost and a blade of grass to sniff on that we don't mind them pulling us to. And then a dog comes into the picture and we say to our dog, hey, no, you can't pull me to that thing, that thing that you really want. That's where frustration occurs. So the first step in all of this is taking away that dog's ability to pull us around and to control the walk because we want to set, create a, a set of consistent rules that our dog understands that I can't pull you to whatever I want just because I see it and I'm impulsive. That'll create a precedent there then we're, when we're walking with our dog that they have to think about their choices not just kind of pull willy-nilly to everything they want. So what we saw out of Olive's before video was a lot of barking and a lot of noise. When we've got our dog in this frame of mind where they're not kind of hitting the end of the lead trying to run away from us we've got a dog that's thinking about their choices so as I creep closer to my dogs now that are just going to stay there and pretty much do nothing we're going to see how Olive really feels because if while the dog is in such a high state of ad ad adrenaline and a high state of drive it's very difficult to see how the dog really feels when they're kind of making so much noise and carrying on so what you might see now is a, a, is a dog that tries to run away from the other dog so then we understand it comes from a place of fear if she tries to get to the other dogs it might come from a place of uh, frustration and she might be a frustrated greeter although they're not exclusive from each other so there might be a combination of both I'm gonna work at a distance where she'll still take food I'll work at a distance where she will feel lead pressure and turn it off um, and we'll see how we get on girl so I go a little bit closer now my dogs aren't gonna do much even if Olive has an adverse response they're pretty strong in their character so I'm gonna move a ah, ah. little bit of lead pressure again nothing good girl yeah good girl she's being proactive and looking at me so I'm being very clear here on what behaviour is going to be favourable for Olive. Yes! Good girl! And which is not. And so far she's smashing it. Now this is at a, a difficulty level one because the dogs are stationary, the dogs are chilling out. 
the dogs in all matter of fact don't give a shit about Olive so it makes Olive's job really easy and what we'll do throughout the day is we'll start moving the dogs around and things like this and we'll find a level that Olive can still work at early doors when I'm teaching lead fundamentals I want the dog to have some autonomy so I want her to make her own choices so I'm gonna give minimal instruction yes and a lot of feedback to her behavior and the way I'm doing this is every time I leave her line of sight such as now I move the opposite direction to where her nose is moving if she hits the end of the lead she'll apply lead pressure upon herself so that's her doing the work and if she follows me yes I'm gonna mark and reward so I'm gonna start I'm gonna probably do another 10 minutes of this as you can see because if she's got only three legs she's fatiguing fairly quickly so probably another 10 15 minutes maximum we'll do the trick and we'll pop her into rest let her have a nap bring her back out and repeat the process Just wrapping the day up with Olive. We've drip fed her throughout the day with the food. We've got to the point where we've had dogs running around. Um, we've had her interacting with dogs. A lot of her issues are predominantly frustration based. And when we take the frustration out of things and add in clarity, we can then give our dog better feedback, better consistency in terms of what we want from them. And and again, what is going to be favourable and what is unfavourable in terms of behaviour. So all we've done today with Olive is taught her what behaviour is going to bring reinforcement and which behaviour is not. So many times we see dogs like Olive that are just have lack clarity in what they need to do and what the owner wants them to do. And once we offer that, we can change a dog in such a small amount of time. From today and now, she needs to go home with her owner and this needs to be put in practice every single day for pretty much months on end to achieve kind of true behavioural rehabilitation. But there's no reason why that, with a lot of hard work, can't happen. Unfortunately, she was a dog that was attacked at, at eight weeks and that's what resulted in losing her leg. But her character is sh strong in the fact that she's not that bad around dogs. We would expect a dog that is ta attacked in their critical learning period to have severe aggression to other animals and dogs. So um, thankfully, I don't think that's the case with Olive whatsoever. Just a lot of frustration based stuff and, and things like that. And obviously a dog that has been through trauma, it's easy to let them kind of uh, bend the rules and things like this because we're so empathetic with the situation. So I think that'll be a factor as well. But other than that, she's done pretty good today. And I think we're in good stead to go and make some dramatic improvements from what we saw on the assessment. Go. as high as we can go. Okay? 
You're going to do exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Every time she looks at you, you're going to say yes. Cool. Great. Yes. Yeah. True. Start delivering food. Oh, yeah.